Join me for my first ever flight on board a 737 MAX. It's a controversial plane that generates strong feelings. And in this video, you'll get a sense of what it's like to travel with American Airlines on their MAXs and decide for yourself whether this is a trip you want to take. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm on the island of St. Croix, but it's time to head home on board a Boeing 737 MAX bound for Miami. It's American Airlines service. Join me as we check it out. Sadly, our time on the least visited U.S. Virgin Island had come to a close. We were able to explore much of the island during our visit and cannot wait to return. But let's head to the airport to catch this two-hour and 45-minute flight. While many U.S. airlines have drastically cut service during the last year, American has gone a different way. Based on my experience flying nearly every U.S. airline over the last year, it seems like American has gone out of its way to maintain reasonable frequencies, keep their airplanes fairly full, and flood their hubs with people moving from one place to another. Passengers departing from St. Croix are encouraged to arrive particularly early for departing flights, for some reason, it was never really made clear to me, departing passengers must pass through customs before leaving. Even though this is in the United States, it's a territory. Uh, we had to go through customs. Maybe one of you could help explain this procedure to me in the comments below. I, I sure would appreciate it. Once we'd arrived and gone through the various departure procedures, we found ourselves inside a windowless room in the middle of a renovation. The terminal building includes a small gift shop, but we were most excited about something else. You see, we were starving and were grateful for the presence of this snack bar. The offerings, although limited, were greatly appreciated. I'd recommend eating before you get to this airport. The island enjoys service to the mainland from Delta, Spirit, and American. Inter-island flights are offered by other carriers as well. The men's bathroom was unlike anything I'd ever seen. It appeared to be inside a gate. This is what I'm most nervous about. It was a kind of semi-permanent port john Using the bathroom in a gate was definitely a first. Well, this is new. Most of the flights to the mainland leave about the same time, so the terminal area filled up quickly. Time for boarding finally arrived, but the process was uh, wonky. Gate agents announced that boarding had begun, so we headed up, scanned our boarding passes, and were told to head out to the gate. But then, we were stopped short of stepping out onto the ramp. It turns out our crew hadn't even gotten on board yet. So, we stood for a while and marveled at this 737 MAX, which no one, other than me, had said anything about. As we waited to board, my thoughts drifted to how you can identify a 737 MAX. If you're ever staring at a plane and trying to figure it out, here's some clues to look for. First of all, 737s are single-aisle, twin-engine airplanes. This is a typical 737-800, not a MAX. The MAX has three distinguishable features. First, the tail cone is pointed instead of the blunt nub shape on other 737s. Second, the engines have distinctive chevrons on their engine nacelles, which help to reduce noise and improve efficiencies. Third, the distinctive scimitar winglets are slightly different from other split design winglets. But when in doubt, you can certainly ask a gate agent, or if you see me staring out the window, as I often am, just tap me on the shoulder and ask me. Eventually, we were told we could board. The 737 MAX was built in large part at the behest of Southwest Airlines. Its tremendous engines allow the plane to fly longer and more efficiently than previous generations, but it also, they also required the airplane's landing gear to be redesigned. See, it needed to be higher up to accommodate them. Without going into too much history, the earliest 737 was originally designed to be really low to the ground in order to easily load bags in small airports without infrastructure. Redesigning the landing gear around these massive engines was a significant change for the airplane. Inside, the first class cabin is arranged in a 2-2 configuration. The seats are comfortable at 21 inches wide and offer 37 inches of pitch. 
This was a really quick turn. The airplane arrived a mere 30 minutes before our scheduled departure, but the ground crew worked quickly and we were ready to go in short order. These American Airlines seats are really well designed. There's a nice storage cubby beside the seat. In there you'll also find a universal plug. The seat offers sufficient recline, but always check behind you before using it. There's a drinks tray that offers a very satisfying click when you open and shut it. You'll also find individual air gaspers, a flight attendant call button, which you should avoid, and a light. The only evidence we were on a max was up front. Even the safety card didn't seem to offer any notice. American Airlines' commitment to clean every plane thoroughly before boarding seemed to have taken a bit of a hit on this flight. Look what I found in the seat pocket. We pushed back and quickly made our way out to the runway for a smooth departure into a beautiful sky. Once we were airborne, the first thing that struck me was just how quiet the MAX is. Again, thanks to those redesigned engines, it was a really smooth ride. The tray table is large and sturdy. And considering the absence of in-seat entertainment, I appreciated the stand for my tablet. American does offer streaming entertainment, and uh, just be sure not to forget your own device if you want to take advantage of it. There's no doubt, the current service offering on board American Airlines is just not as good as Hawaiian or Alaska Airlines, but it is heads and shoulders above Delta Airlines right now. A full drink service, including coffee, tea, mixed, and soft drinks is offered. Passengers have the choice of a cheese plate or a turkey sandwich, and the turkey sandwich did the trick for me. My second in just a few hours, but I have to admit, the one on the ground was better. By far, the highlight of this flight were the island views below. Our route took us right over many Caribbean islands, and they all looked warm, tropical, and inviting. I can't wait to head back down there. This flight was certainly one of the most international feeling flights I've had in a long time, and it certainly was a treat. I wish the crew had been a little bit more attentive. They were tough to find and seemed a little reluctant to engage with passengers on this particular journey. But the views more than made up for any criticism. That crystal blue water is just unlike anything else in the world. I felt so fortunate to be able to gaze out this window and see so many beautiful places. Our entire flight was remarkably smooth, but our pilots must have thought that might change at any moment because they never turned off the fastened seatbelt sign. However, I really needed to go to the bathroom, so I assumed the risk. I don't often show footage of bathrooms in my videos, but this one contains two of them. You see, I don't like to linger unnecessarily in a toilet, but the ones on the Max have a reputation for being so small that they seem worthy of being shared. Here's a peek inside. It was, without a doubt, tight, but seemed manageable to me. I haven't mentioned them in a while, but it's time. I just got new headphones, Bose QuietComfort earbuds. They're Bluetooth and I really like them. So if you find yourself in the market for a pair, please consider using the link below. Your price is the same, the channel earns a small commission, and everyone wins. As I mentioned earlier, this is a controversial airplane. And before I say any more about that, it's important to highlight the fact that commercial air travel is the safest means of public transportation. Countless dedicated professionals work hard each and every day to ensure it's safe for us to travel. Unfortunately, when incidents and accidents do occur, they garner a great deal of attention due, in part, to their relative rarity. That means it can be easy to feel like air travel is more dangerous than it really is. That said, my expertise, if you can even call it that, is purely in the passenger experience, so that's what you're going to see here on this channel. The question whether the 737 MAX should have been built in the first place is definitely up for debate by people who know a lot more than I do. 
but I certainly welcome your comments about this important topic below. I'm looking forward to reading them. From the standpoint of passenger comfort, this flight was a win. Now, is the 737 MAX as nice as a wide-bodied airplane with lie-flat seats? Of course it's not. Would I want to squeeze into one of Ryanair's high-density MAXs with 200 seats? Absolutely not. But would I personally hop back on board another American Airlines MAX in first class again? Most definitely. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.